All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Lemon Blast ball python. The Lemon Blast actually consists of two genes, the pastel and the pinstripe. And you may have heard of the Lemon Blast. It's one of the most popular combinations in all of ball pythons. As a matter of fact, I went over to morphmarket.com and they had over 4,000 Lemon Blast combos over on Morph Market. It's pretty incredible. And when you start working other genes into the Lemon Blast, you can make some really impressive combinations. And kind of the cool thing about the Lemon Blast is you can actually get them for relatively inexpensive and work other genes that you can you know pick up for like less than $100 in some cases, work it into the Lemon Blast, get some multi-gene combos that are really extremely impressive. And kind of the other weird thing about the Lemon Blast is when you start working other genes into the mix, you get a lot of kind of crazy common names. You know, like the pastel and pinstripe is the Lemon Blast. When you start working other genes into the mix, you get all kinds of really crazy slang names. As a matter of fact, some of them actually have multiple names for the same combination. It gets a little confusing. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over the internet and I want to show you the potential of the Lemon Blast Ball Python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and now I'm going to start with the Pastel Ball Python. The Pastel is one component of the Lemon Blast, and this is what a Pastel looks like. Essentially, it's a morph that's yellow, and sometimes it can be a brighter yellow, or sometimes a browned out yellow. It depends on the line of yellow, and the patterns can really be reduced. Sometimes they can be really super reduced. I say this is probably one of the more reduced Pastels that I've actually seen. And kind of the interesting thing is with a lot of these genes, if you, they're all actually compatible so you can actually take a really bright line of pastel breed it to kind of a browned out pastel and you'll get a super pastel with one copy of each line and you actually breed that super pastel to something else half the offspring come out really bright yellow the other come out as kind of a browned out yellow it's, it's a kind of an interesting anomaly and all the lines of pastel are actually compatible so if you breed them together you will make the super and here is another component of the lemon blast and that is is the pinstripe. The pinstripe is probably one of my favorite genes. It just makes for a really gold, probably the brightest gold ball python you can actually get with just one single gene. And it's actually a dominant mutation. So if you take a pinstripe, breed it to something else, half the offspring will come out as pinstripes. And if you take a pinstripe, breed it to a pastel, 25% of the time, this is what you get. You get a lemon blast. <laughs> this is what a lemon blast is. As a matter of fact, I think I have three female lemon blasts in my collection right now. They're pretty powerful. I produce quite a few lemon blasts every year. And it's, it's kind of interesting. Some of them, it really depends on the line of pastel that's in the lemon blast. Sometimes they can be really super bright yellow. Sometimes they can be almost like a bright orange. It's pretty amazing how very they can be and I'd say as far as kind of the normal lemon blast like you would see in most cases this looks pretty typical of a lemon blast you can definitely tell it looks a lot different than a pinstripe and if you actually add one more copy of pastel into a lemon blast so if you actually took a lemon blast and bred it back to a pastel you could actually get this snake right here take a look at this this is a super blast Two copies of pastel in a lemon blast makes for a really stunning snake. It's pretty amazing how just, you know, it's essentially you have you know, the super pastel. Essentially, when you have the super pastel, it really reduces and breaks up the pattern a lot more. In a lot of cases, it actually brings out a lot more yellow. And this is a really stunning snake. If you're actually wondering how much these are, this is, look at this, this is less than you know, $200. And, you know, the shipping will probably cost you probably half as much as the snake cost in a lot of cases these are really inexpensive and you can really have some fun breeding some snakes if you start with the lemon blast so here is the lesser. I kind of wanted to show you what happens when you breed the lesser into the lemon blast. The lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So you breed two lessers together, you get an all-white snake with bright blue eyes. Pretty amazing. And usually when you breed lesser into combinations, a lot of times you'll increase the contrast and the brightness of the snake. Kind of it really brings out a lot of the contrast. So here's what happens if you work lesser into a lemon blast. Take a look at this. this this is actually the Pastel Lesser Pinstripe, and there's quite a few different names for this. As a matter of fact, uh, the Lesser Pinstripe is actually called the Kingpin, so you can actually call this the Pastel Kingpin 
or you could call this the Lesser Lemon Blast, or it's also, there's quite a few names for this, as a matter of fact, you can also call this the Queen Pin, or the Emperor, or some people call it the Emperor Pin, or the Emperor Pinstripe. All those names for this one snake, it's pretty mind-boggling. Some of the common names for this snake right here makes for a really impressive combo. And you're gonna actually see a lot of the contrast coming out from the Lesser included into the next so here is the fire. The fire works really well if you actually work it into the lemon blast. As a matter of fact, I was looking through my collection. I was like, all right, I have all these lemon blasts. What can I breed? I actually have a fire pie, which includes fire into the pie. It really lightens all the dark spots in a pie combination. If I actually bred that to my lemon blast, I can make some impressive combos. Everything would be het pie too. And fire is, is actually a black eyed leucistic. So if you actually take two fires, breed them together, you get a super fire which is an all-white snake with black eyes not compatible with the lesser in the blue eyed leucistic you won't make a white snake if you actually breed a fire with a lesser <laughs> it gets a little bit confusing but if you actually take a fire breed it into the lemon blast take a look at this you actually get a dragonfly really impressive combination and the fire really lightens and brightens the snake overall and it seems like when you mix fire with pastel or yellow belly or orange dream any of those combos it really makes for some super bright and flashy snakes and i don't think there's any other common names for the dragonfly other than the dragonfly so essentially this would be the pinstripe pastel fire i suppose you could also call it the fire lemon blast the dragonfly is pretty a pretty common name you see a lot of dragonflies and that's kind of what drives it crazy at some of the reptile shows you see all these snakes and all the little displays for sale and someone will put on there this is a dragonfly and and you almost have to pull out your phone and type, uh, do a Google search. What are the genes in the dragonfly? It gets a little bit confusing, especially if you're new into ball pythons. So here is the spider. The spider is actually probably one of the most visually stunning standalone morphs that there is. It almost has like the spider web pattern right on the top and it almost looks like it has calico in it, but that's part of the spider mutation with the white coming up the sides. The spider is actually dominant. So you breed a spider to something else and half the offspring come out as spider. And here's what happens if you mix spider in with a lemon blast. Take a look at this. You actually get what is known as a spider spinner blast. So the spinner is, we can actually take a look at the genes, the spinner is actually the pinstripe and the spider together. So you actually get, uh, it's, there's a couple different names for this, but I'd say in most cases people actually just call this a spinner blast. So here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon worked into a lemon blast, makes a really <laughs> unique combination. The cinnamon's actually a dark morph. If you breed two cinnamons together, you get a super cinnamon, which is a really dark, chocolatey, completely patternless, almost a black patternless snake. Pretty awesome. And if you work cinnamon into the lemon blast, take a look at this crazy snake, you actually get a pewter blast. Really awesome. If you're going to the dark side, if I actually had some dark morphs, in here in my collection, I would definitely breed them to my lemon blast and make a pewter blast. So this is this is kind of interesting because this actually has the cinnamon and the cinnamon and the pastel is what, what is known as a pewter. And you can also the cinnamon's actually allelic with black pastel. So if you actually take the cinnamon and breed it with the black pastel, you'll make what looks kind of similar to the super cinnamon. It's actually acts like a super, almost looks exactly the same. You'll actually make an eight ball with the cinnamon and the black pastel it's almost a jet black snake that's completely patternless and you can actually interchange the the cinnamon with the black pastel in this mix and take a look at this this is actually what the black pastel looks like almost exactly like the cinnamon in color as a matter of fact the black pastel if you actually compare them side by side the black pastel is usually a little bit darker in color than the cinnamon but a lot of times there's a lot of variation in both the black pastels and the cinnamon 
them in. And here's what happens if you work black pastel into the mix. You actually get a black pewter blast, which is almost the same effect as working the cinnamon into the mix, except you get the black pewter instead of the pewter, which is the black pastel and the pastel instead of the cinnamon and the black pastel. And the cinnamon and the pastel <laughs> gets a little bit confusing between the black pewter and this the pewter. Makes for a really amazing, almost like a dark silver colored snake. So here is banana. Banana works really well with the Lemon Blast too. The banana is a co-dominant mutation. You can actually breed two bananas together, get the super banana, which looks almost like a regular banana, a little bit faded out. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people making super bananas and they don't even know, you know, looking at the super banana, if it's actually a super or if it's just one copy of the banana. It's that close in appearance. And if you actually work banana into the Lemon Blast, this is what you get. You get a banana. <laughs> Lemon Blast. I guess you could also call this the Banana Blast. Makes for a really impressive combo. As a matter of fact, I was looking through my collection and kind of going through this video. I was thinking, what can I breed to my Lemon Blast? And I actually have a Banana Enchi Clown. So I can actually breed this plus Enchi into the mix and everything would be 100% Clown. And I can actually produce this here in my collection. This is pretty awesome. If you're kind of wondering how much this is, this is, believe it or not, this is only $250. With shipping, it's probably 300. So you can make some really amazing combos for you know 300 or less. In a lot of cases, it's pretty amazing. So here is an Enchi, an Enchi, it works really well with the Lemon Blast. So I actually kind of accidentally produced an Enchi Lemon Blast this year when I was breeding some of my snakes together. I actually had Enchi floating around in my collection and I didn't even know it because it was mixed in with my Desert Ghost, which is a really reduced pattern in most of your Desert Ghost. And you mix Enchi with Desert Ghost and sometimes you can't even tell that you have Enchi in there. And I actually bred it to a Lemon Blast and I produced an Enchi Lemon Blast and that is what keyed me into, hey, I think I have Enchi in my Desert Ghost. And essentially what Enchi does is it really reduces the pattern, sometimes almost tiger stripe like this, and sometimes it just slightly reduces the, the, the kind of Roswell gray alien heads. It depends on the line of Enchi. And a lot of the Enchis bring out a lot of the, the kind of the orange or the bright yellow in a lot of cases. So here's what happens if you work Enchi into a Lemon Blast. <laughs> Take a look at this. This is an Enchi Blast really beautiful snake. Probably one of my favorite combos because it really brings out a lot of the color in the snake. As a matter of fact, if you work the other genes, you know, if you actually did like super pastel and orange dream and fire into something like this, you can make the colors really explode. And kind of what I did in this video is I really focused on just adding one gene at a time. So, you, you know, you can actually add, you know, three or four or five genes and it gets really confusing as far as what genes are actually having an effect on the final product. <laughs> you kind of kind of have to work just one gene at a time to see what the effects are. And take a look at the price on this one: one hundred and ninety-nine dollars. That is pretty incredible. And usually, we're over here talking about you know ten thousand dollar snakes and crazy stuff like that. So this is a really inexpensive project, and I think that's why it's so popular because everyone wants to make really cool snakes, but they don't want to spend a lot of money getting into these projects. And it's it's kind of kind of like you know you can do this whether you're advanced or a beginner. As a in fact, a lot of these are kind of the bread and butter of the ball python industry because if you produce like a $10,000 snake, let me tell you, there's not a lot of people that can shell out $10,000 for a snake, but a lot of people can actually afford, you know, $200 for an Enchi Blast. So here is the Desert Ghost. This one's a little bit more expensive because the Desert Ghost is a recessive mutation and it's probably one of the most untapped, probably one of the most underrated genes in all of ball pythons. Works really well with a Lemon Blast. And the Desert Ghost is, is, is kind of confusing because it really reduces the pattern. Almost looks like Enchi is in the mix. And sometimes if you work Enchi into a Desert Ghost, you can't even see it in the Desert Ghost. And some, some of these Desert Ghosts, this is just a, a, a single gene well there's actually two copies of the desert ghost for this is a visual desert ghost some of them are like a bright yellow and some of them are almost a xanthic looking they are really variable between kind of the different versions of the desert ghost and here's what happens if you were a desert ghost into the lemon blast and take a look at this the desert ghost really cleans it up and brightens it and it's probably the cleanest and brightest gene you can actually add with the lemon blast pretty amazing 
And kind of the cool thing about the, the Desert Ghost is if you make some Desert Ghost combos with either just the Pastel or the Lemon Blast, they really retain a lot of their brightness and really the clean background and the color and the contrast as they age and mature. So you find something like this as an older snake and a lot of times the old ones will actually look just as clean and bright as some of the young ones. It's pretty amazing. So here is a clown, and when clown is actually a recessive combination, one of the most popular recessive, you know, it's probably the king of combos when it comes to recessives, and it works really kind of like, un it's really unusual when you wear clown with pinstripe. The pinstripe really jumbles up the pattern, makes for a clown like probably you'd never get with any other gene, makes for a really interesting combo. If you actually wear clown into a lemon blast, take a look at this crazy snake, that is pretty cool crazy. I really love the clown with the pinstripe and the clown with the lemon blast. And the pinstripe kind of jumbles it up a little and then some, for some reason when you mix pastel with a clown, a lot of times you have unexpected results compared to a lot of other genes. Makes for a really interesting combo. As a matter of fact, a lot of your clown combos have really crazy patterns on the head. And on this one, you don't really see any pattern on the head, which is kind of an unusual combination for clowns. As a matter of fact, if we look at the price on this one, this one is, wait a minute, <laughs> let me adjust my glasses. That is $1,000. $950 for a Lemon Blast Clown. This is kind of a high-end project right here. And kind of the, kind of the reason this is so high-end is because this is a female 1900 grams. So this is a female ready to breed. So, you know, you can actually buy the snake and breed it right away. Especially at clowns, these are almost impossible to find. The adult clowns that are multi-gene clowns. And that is why the price is so high. Because you can pretty much get your money back in the first year if you actually bred this this to another clown. So here is the leopard ball python. The leopard is really awesome. I definitely need to get leopard in my collection. One of the genes I've been looking at really close. And the leopard essentially, it really jumbles up the pattern. You mix it with almost anything and you get a really crazy pattern. And a lot of times uh, the leopard, it'll darken the snake. If the, if the snake actually has a lot of darks in it, it'll really darken the darks in the snake. If you actually work leopard into something bright like a corgle or something, usually it won't lighten it. But if you have darks you know, anywhere in the snake the leopard makes it even darker which is pretty awesome here's what happens if you work leopard into a lemon blast take a look at this this is really awesome probably one of my favorite lemon blast combos working leopard into the mix and you know when it comes to pinstripes i like the really gold color and this really keeps the gold and really shatters the pattern makes for a really amazing combination as a matter of fact i was looking at this how much was this one this one was 250 dollars and it was 1500 grams of course it's a male so you know males are usually a little bit less than the females sometimes they can be significantly less than the females especially as adults because you're not really getting eggs from a male although this one it would be ready to breed right out of the chute so here is the Mojave. The Mojave is really similar to the Lesser. They're both in the blue at the assistant complex. The Mojave is, you usually can tell it's, it's a little bit darker, especially right up on the background than the Lesser, and they work with genes differently, the, the Mojave and the Lesser. So if you actually take a Mojave, work it into like a Phantom, you get a Purple Passion. And if you actually work Phantom into a Lesser, you get a completely white snake with blue eyes. They're a little bit different. Here's what happens if you work the Mojave into the lemon blast you get a pastel jigsaw look at this beauty that is pretty amazing and essentially what it is is the jigsaw is the mojave and the pinstripe together makes the jigsaw and this is so this is the pastel jigsaw or you could call it the mojave lemon blast is another name for this one this one is you know if you're looking at prices a lot of people are like hey what are the prices on these because i want to know if i can actually get into these projects and pretty much across the board on most of these you can actually afford this one was only two hundred dollars so here is the albino, and when it comes to visual dominance, the albino is the king. The albino almost masks every single gene that is in the mix. And the only thing that a lot of people do with albinos is, you know, pretty much the standalone albino, I think, is the most impressive. Just a straight standalone albino. I've actually produced quite a few of these. They sell really well at the reptile shows. If you're looking for a pet snake and you want something really inexpensive, really beautiful with a lot of contrast, 
past, albino is the way to go. But if you start working other genes into albino, a lot of times the albino completely masks all the other genes. It's almost to the degree of like the champagne. The champagne's kind of the same way. You can make a few really stunning things with the champagne, but in a lot of cases it really masks all the other genes. And here's what happens if you work albino into the lemon blast. Take a look at this. This completely obliterated all the pattern. But kind of the cool thing about this is it's a really clean, almost patternless albino, which I really like. The, the addition of the pastel, the pinstripe, and the albino. You can definitely tell all the albinos have the bright red eyes. Pretty awesome. And this one's a little bit harder to hit because remember the albino is a recessive mutation. So essentially what you do is you take an albino, you breed it to a lemon blast, and you produce lemon blasts that were het albinos. And then you have to breed those to either a het albino or a visual albino to actually get the albino lemon blast. And this one's a little more expensive. This one's $550 just because it's a four gene combo and a little bit more difficult to hit, but still a really amazing ball python. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Dustin Hathaway asks, can I feed my ball python when it's deep blue in shed? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, when I first started in ball pythons, I was over on the reptile forums all the time, and a lot of people were pretty adamant. They said you should never feed your ball python when it's deep blue in shed. And I found pretty much, you know, about 50% of the time, especially for hatchlings, they'll actually eat when they're deep blue in shed. And one of the things you have to remember is when they're really deep blue, they have the kind of the blue over their eyes. A lot of times they can't really Really see so if you're actually feeding them a lot of times you have to put the rodent right up to their mouth sometimes almost right on the tip of their nose so they can actually smell the rodent because a lot of times they really can't see it and kind of the other interesting thing I found is with a really big collection you know I can go through pretty much from one end to the other and I feed you know on a regular schedule if I you know attempt to feed a snake in blue and it doesn't eat I can take that rodent and feed it to another snake versus if you just had one snake especially if it's a ball python that's kind of picky to begin with and you thaw out a rodent and try to feed your ball python and I'd say maybe 50% of the time when they're deep and blue they probably won't eat it so then you end up wasting a rodent so in a lot of cases I'd say if you have uh, just one ball python and you're trying to feed it mate you might want to skip the feeding or just wait until they're kind of out of the blue phase or some people actually you know use up the extra rodents by getting like a monitor or a crocodile or something like that so you actually never waste a rodent and in this case essentially what I do is I euthanize my rodents I do like a fresh kill and then if they don't eat it then I can pop it in the freezer and then a lot of times I'll actually sell those as a frozen thawed to a pet store so essentially I don't waste any rodents at all here in my operation so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video